This is an instructional video offering a brief tutorial on the 3D Crystal Viewer that is used for illustration in the Crystallography Learning Module developed by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education, or SCME. Let's take a quick look at the SCME Crystallography Learning Module itself. This learning module can be downloaded from the SCME website shown here. The 3D Viewer is used to support the concepts and activities of this learning module. To get the most out of this instructional video, you should have a basic understanding of crystal structure and Miller Index notation. If you need to brush up on these concepts, please read through the Crystallography Overview and view the Miller Index Activity demo on the SCME YouTube channel. There are a couple of ways that you can access the 3D Viewer. If you have the Crystallography Overview PDF file, you can find a link at the bottom of this page. Or, you can simply copy this URL shown here into your web browser to access the 3D Viewer. So let's get started. On the right hand side here, you can see listed many different types of structures. Since in this lesson we're exploring the silicon crystal, we're going to view the diamond structure. So click on the diamond link here on the right. It's important to note that carbon diamonds, silicon, and germanium all have the same atomic crystal structure. So a diamond, a germanium crystal, and a silicon crystal would all look the same. But for our purposes, we will continue to refer to this as a silicon crystal. Now the purpose here is to get a 3D view of the atoms as they're arranged within the unit cell. Each and every unit cell in a silicon crystal is arranged in the exact same way. So let's play around a little bit to see how this viewer works. It's very simple. Just use your cursor to pick a spot on the crystal and click and drag to manipulate the unit cell for a 3D view from any vantage point. As you can see, there are no labels or axes shown in this viewer, so in order to have a good reference as to what you're looking at, it will be helpful to define some axes. So let's call this spot here the origin. And from this point, we will orient our x, y, and z axes. So the x axis will go in this direction, the y-axis will go in this direction, and the z-axis will go in this direction. This is the basic Cartesian coordinate system. Picking where these axes go is completely arbitrary. It doesn't matter where I define them to be as long as I remain consistent. Okay, now that we've defined our axes, let's take a look at different planes. Again, the Miller Index Activity demo explains in detail the naming of these crystal planes, so I won't go over that here. I'll simply show you what each of these planes look like in this unit cell. So if I look at this front crystal plane shown here, I notice that it's perpendicular to the x-axis and parallel to the y and z axes. This would be the 1, 0, 0 plane. And as a side note, the parallel plane in the back of this cube is also the 1, 0, 0 plane. Now, let's take a look at this from the front view. This here is the front view of the 1, 0, 0 plane. Reorienting the unit cell, we're now going to try and find the 0, 1, 0 plane. This is going to be the plane that is perpendicular to the y-axis and parallel to the x and z-axis. So rotating this unit cell this way will give us a view of the 0, 1, 0 plane. Again, let's reorient the unit cell and we're now going to find the 0, 0, 1 plane. The 0, 0, 1 plane is going to be the plane that is perpendicular to the z-axis and parallel to the x and y axes. So let's rotate this so we can get a view of the 0, 0, 1 plane. Now what do we notice about all three of the planes we've just looked at? Looking again, the 1, 0, 0 plane, this one here, and going to the 0, 1, 0 plane here, and then the 0, 0, 1 plane, hopefully you'll notice that they all look the same. Well, since the unit cell is symmetric about the x, y, and z axes, the 1, 0, 0, the 0, 1, 0, and the 0, 0, 1 planes all have the same atomic orientation. They also have the same crystal structure and thus the same properties. 
Okay, now let's take a look at a different view. Looking at this photo of the 111 plane, notice how to view the plane we could take a vantage point at the origin and look diagonally through the unit cell to see the 111 plane. So, manipulating the unit cell like so should give us a good look at the 111 plane. So what do you think? Does this 111 plane look like the 100, 010, or the 001 plane? Well, no, it doesn't. It's quite a different view. So you would expect that silicon with the 111 crystal orientation would have different properties from silicon with the 100 crystal orientation. A good way to see this difference in crystal structure is to actually break some wafers. In the breaking wafer activity, you are given both a 111 and a 100 type wafer. You don't know which is which, and based upon how they break, you can guess which type of wafer you have. So say you have a 111 type wafer with this crystal orientation. Would you expect the wafer to break randomly, like glass, or at a specific angle, say 60 degrees or maybe 90 degrees? And say you had a 100 type wafer with this type of crystal orientation. How would you expect this wafer to break? This viewer can help you to understand the atoms and bonds exposed along each plane, helping you to predict how each type of wafer will break. The crystal orientation of the silicon wafer is of great importance when designing and building micro-sized products. Generally speaking, there are two main types of wafers used in microtechnology fabrication, the 100 and the 111 type wafers. As we showed earlier, the 100, the 010, and the 001 planes are exactly the same, so when these wafers are manufactured, they're simply called 100 type wafers. And as we illustrated here, the 111 type wafers would be vastly different from the 100 because of their different atomic orientations. Now when you access the viewer yourself, see if you can take a look at different planes, such as the 110 plane or maybe the 011 plane. And for more in-depth information, make sure and download the Crystallography Overview Learning Module on the SCME website under Educational Materials. Thanks for listening.